Well, Linda's nudging me because dinner is being served at 7 o'clock, so I'm going to be brief. <clears throat> Matthew Kelly was a great author and speaker and uh, for us Catholics, and he says, our lives change when our habits change. We've all probably heard that phrase. How many of you ever heard of Stephen Covey? Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, lots of us. I found, you know, I really, I really appreciated his work in my business career, and and now I've found that it not only helps in a lot of other matters, but it also helps in our spiritual walk. And so I just want to share with you, I think it's on page uh, seven, six and seven in your uh, program, a little bit about these seven habits. And the three of them that I think can really have an impact on our prayer life. Stephen Covey talks about this thing called the maturity continuum. And the maturity continuum says that a lot of us start life, all of us start life, in a dependent state, right? We depend on mom and dad. Nothing gets done with mom, without mom and dad. Same in our prayer life. I think we start in a dependent state, and then we grow into in independence, and ultimately, the greatest form of maturity is interdependence, where we not only re are self-reliant, but we're there to serve others and to be served by others. So it is in our prayer life, I think, that if we can get to a state of independence, we can somehow get more out of the Mass, as Father Island talks about. If we come to Mass and we're strictly dependent on the homily and strictly dependent on great music for us to have this inspiring experience, we might be let down. But if we're independent in our maturity prayer life, we're going to get more out of that Mass. So just look at that table for a second on page 7. There's three habits that I think of as me habits. And the first one is to be proactive. And all that simply means is that we take responsibility. We take action for this prayer life of ours. It's not somebody else's responsibility. It's ours. And one of the things that we can do is we can have a little self-talk. And we can say, self, it's time for me to take action in my prayer life. It's time for me to carve out some time, as the archbishop mentioned. Or one of the things he said is it's the Christ, in the Christian life, it's our oxygen. I like that. And so it's really our responsibility to go find that time and find that place. And the second one that will have a major impact on our prayer life is to begin with the end in mind. That's what Stephen Covey calls it. And that simply means that we plan, we set goals, we have this vision of our prayer life and where we want it to go. We know that it's really up to God to impact that prayer time, but it's up to us to carve out the time, to find the spot. So one of the things that might be in the plan, if it were me, and this actually is kind of going on with me, I've fallen away from my da daily prayer routine, and so I've had to get back to it. And so I've decided, okay, what is my prayer room going to be? What is the chair that I'm going to sit in? What, is, what other essentials are part of that routine? How long each day am I going to do it? How many days per week am I going to do it? This is all part of the plan. And it's really up to us to create that vision of what it's going to look like. And I strongly recommend use this book. If you're not carving out that time, and, or, or you maybe did and now you're veered away like I have, get back to it. Write that plan down in, in your book. And the third me habit that I think makes sense is to put first things first. And this is all about priorities. Like Father said, is it, is it uh, you know, I'm a Minnesota Vikings fan, and it was a little bit of a tough morning for me before coming to Mass today. But that's an important part of my life. But it is, is it the priority? Is it first things first? Or is prayer first things first? So really getting in line with my priorities, being a time blocker, being a time manager, is going to affect not only lots of aspects in your life, but it is going to affect your prayer life. And so to me, these are the three big habits that move us into this independent prayer life. And then the next three habits that we can go into another time move us into this interdependent prayer life. And then the last habit that Stephen Covey talks about is really relevant in our prayer life too, and that's to sharpen the saw. And in our prayer life, the way we might sharpen the saw is we might go on an annual retreat, or we might talk to a spiritual director. But we're doing something so we don't have this start to get rusty and, and uh, impractical. So those are your seven steps, I think, or the seven habits. I'm going to invite Linda up, and she's going to share the rest of the evening with